Hello, and welcome to Christian Outreach Center's Facebook page. Thank you for being a part of this online experience. We believe God is going to bless you through the message you are about to hear today. Please prepare your hearts and get ready for the ministry of the Word. Our vision continues, expands, and abounds to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. 
man, ah, man, ah, man, ah, man, ah, man, ah, man, Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God. This is Sunday morning, July the 18th, 2021. And I greet you with the love of the Lord. Facebook family, Christian Outreach Center family, my family, and all of you that are visiting with us today. We're so glad you came and I pray that you will receive the word with gladness today and that uh, you will be blessed beyond measure have some very good uh, word to share with you today that i believe will bless you so i welcome you to our services christian outreach center we have in life in person service and we have service live on facebook god is good father we thank you for allowing us to see another day we thank you lord for your goodness for your mercy for your loving kindness to all of us thank you father for your wonderful people that are called by your name and we thank you lord for calling us by your name thank you for those who will receive jesus today those who will whose lives will be changed those who will become a part of our church we just give you thanks we give you glory and honor and praise and lord i pray and thank you that the word will fall on good ground we thank you that none of the harvest will be lost i thank you father praise god that the word will not be hindered by any force and we give you praise for it in Jesus name. And so we're going to continue with uh, the series, The Importance of Prayer. This is part three, The Importance of Prayer. I will repeat uh, some things that you've heard and it's good, repetition is good. The word says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so when you hear something over and over again, that's good because it's getting in your spirit and it'll come out of your mouth when you need it. And so I will probably repeat some things. I know I will that you've heard, but it's because I really want to make sure that you're getting it and that you are applying it to your life. And so the purpose and objective for me teaching this series, first of all, what do I desire to see happen as a result of this series? Basically, and that's what the purpose and the objectives are for me teaching. And so first of all, that we as believers, and that I'm gonna, everything will fall under that we as believers, meaning this is why I'm teaching, what I'm teaching and what we desire to see uh, and happen in your lives as a result of the teaching on an on ongoing basis, not just one time, but as you grow in the area of prayer, and mature in things of God. So that we as believers, number one, have a desire to pray. You know, prayer needs to be desired and the enemy will fight you every step of the way because he doesn't want you to pray. So that we have a desire to pray. And then that we become diligent and disciplined to pray. We go from desire to discipline and being diligent to pray so that we become diligent and disciplined to pray. And then after we've become diligent and disciplined to pray, prayer becomes a delight. That prayer will become a delight. You enjoy praying. You don't have to pray. You get to pray. And then a, a real strong desire that I have is to see every COC household become a house of prayer. I'm not saying that you aren't, but that we intensify 
our prayer. Glory to God. And you know, that came from the scripture. As I was reading the scripture, Matthew 21, 13, uh, NIV, Jesus speaking, and he says, my house will be called a house of prayer. And that's what he was teaching. And so I'm believing God that just because Jesus wants his house and he in that in that context of scripture he said that's what he desired that his house be called a house of prayer you've made it a den of thieves but i want my house to be called a house of prayer and so that's my desire desire for all of you at, uh, as members and then in the body of Christ that our homes our houses become a house of, of houses of prayer and then that we inspire others to pray. Our lives dedicated to prayer will be an inspiration to others, especially when they see us get results from our praying. Amen. And we don't go around bragging about our prayer life or how long we pray or how much we pray. But you know what? Uh, people can just see it in your attitude. Prayer is something about prayer and one who prays. There's a difference. There is a difference. It makes you sweeter. I remember uh, years ago, the church that Pastor Johnny and I attended, uh, there was a sweet elderly mother. Actually, she was the church mother. And uh, someone had asked her, her name was Mother Earl, and they asked her, Mother Earl, you're such a sweet older lady. How did you become so sweet at this age? And she said, honey, when I was young, I was sweet. Amen. And she was a woman of prayer. And so prayer, uh, there's something about people who pray. You know it by their actions and their attitudes. And so as we pray and we get results to our prayers, others are going to want to be, uh, well, they will be inspired by our prayers, especially when they see us getting results. Also, that we understand the essence of prayer and the power behind prayer. There is power behind our praying. Amen? And then that we do not take lightly the word of God that's calling us to pray. That, and that we make prayer a priority. Yes, he's calling us to pray during this hour, everywhere, homes, our cities, the nation, we are called to pray. It's vital. And so we need to make prayer a priority in our lives. And so ask the Holy Spirit to give you a desire to pray and to help you in the area of prayer, especially if it's been a struggle for you. And I think we can all say at one time or another, that it has been a struggle or there are things that we didn't understand and there's always something to distract you to keep you from praying and so that's why you have to be determined that i'm going to pray and make it a priority amen so today we're going to see what god's word has to say about answering prayers and effective prayers you know um, we hear a lot about prayer. There are a lot of misnomers. There are a lot of sacred cows that need to be killed concerning prayer. Uh, you hear people talk about how long they pray, how much they pray. And, you know, I really don't think it's necessary unless the Holy Spirit is giving you something to share about your length of prayer and how often you pray. And many times he may do that for a purpose. But, you know, we don't need to go around bragging about how much we pray and how long we pray. That really doesn't glorify God. Amen? When we're not glorifying ourselves, we're not putting ourselves on a spiritual pedestal to say that we're holier than others because of our prayer life. Prayer has a purpose, and it certainly is not to exalt us, but it is to glorify God. So how long you pray is wonderful. You might want to keep it to yourself unless somebody asks you. Praise God. So we, we want to get the most out of our prayer lives. We want God to be glorified. We want him to be honored. We want the results that come from prayer. So let's look at the first scripture, Matthew 7 and 7. 
NIV. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Now this is Jesus speaking. And then in the eighth verse, he says, everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. Glory to God. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Well, this is affirmative. He's saying that ask, ask in prayer. It'll be given to you whatever you're asking for. Seek, and you will find, it's in the seventh verse, knock and the door will be opened to you. Prayers open doors that have been closed. Eighth verse, for everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be open. So Jesus encourages Perseverance in prayer. You know, you, you may be praying or asking for something. Or you may be petitioning God in an area of prayer. And you, you're expecting results. And I, actually, we shouldn't go in prayer not expecting to receive. But we don't always know exactly when our prayers are going to be answered. So he's telling us to persist in prayer. The... Uh, in other words, he's encouraging perseverance in prayer. The tense of the Greek verbs in verse 8 designates continued actions. In other words, Jesus is telling us to persist in pursuing God. Amen? You stay with it. You stay with it. People often give up after a few heartfelt uh, efforts or half-hearted efforts, I'll say. And they conclude that God cannot be found or he's not answering. Why? Because we're so used to this. We have this mentality that I want it and I wanted it yesterday. I want it now. I want it quick. Well, we have to persevere in prayer and we have to be patient. Glory to God. And you stay with it. That's one thing about it. You have to stay with it. And he's already said what he will do. He's already telling us what to do so we just need to be persistent in our prayer life thanking god as we go along trusting god and believing that he answers and that he has he's, he knows when the right time or the right moment is for that particular prayer to be answered sometimes uh well let me just say this knowing god takes faith without him in hebrews it says it's impossible to please God without faith. It takes faith. It takes focus and follow through. To follow through with what you're believing him for without giving up or quitting. Don't ever give up. God's word is true. He, whatever he says, he'll do. And he rewards us. The Bible says that he rewards those who diligently seek him, who stay with it, who steadily apply the word, who believe that he'll do what he says he will do. Amen. Make this confession with me or this declaration. I won't give up in my efforts to seek God. I will continue to ask him for more knowledge, for patience, for wisdom, for love, and understanding. He will give them to me as I seek him. Glory to God. Stay with it. Well, I want to read another scripture to you that's beautiful. And we're talking about scriptures that promise answered prayers. And there are many of them. I'm not reading all of them, but I'm just giving you a few in this, in this particular lesson to let you know that it is his will to answer your prayers. He does. His word says he does. He tells us how to pray. And he answers prayers. These scriptures tell us that he does. So it's a promise that we can claim. These are promises that we can pray and expect 
to get answers. John 15, 16, NIV, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit. Glory to God. Bear fruit. And that fruit will last or that fruit will remain. Then you will ask the Father or then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Listen to that. He will give you whatever you ask in his name. That is a promise. And then he says that we're to bear fruit. You know, at the beginning of the year, or at the end of the year, we gave gift, a gift to the body. And it was a calendar. And it, the calendar has the fruit of the Spirit. And each month, with the, with the exception of, because there are more than uh, nine months, but there were nine fruit for specific months. And, of course, this calendar also has the birthdays on the side of all of our members. Well, every so often, there's a fruit that's mentioned and a scripture. And that's an opportunity for you to put the word in you because he wants you to bear fruit and he wants that fruit to be evident. He wants that fruit to be lived out. Amen. And he says that I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit and fruit that will last. Glory to God. Don't you want your love to last? Don't you want the fruit that you're bearing to last? Well, that's what he's requiring of us that the fruit lasts, then, Jesus says, the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. And then in that 17th verse, he gives a command and he says, love each other. That's Jesus speaking. It's in the red. Love each other. Glory to God. We have a command to love. Amen. We have a command to bear fruit. And that that fruit remains, that that fruit lasts, lasts, and that that fruit is operative in us. Glory to God. Amen. And then here's another scripture that he gives us in 1 John 5 and 14, NIV. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. How do you approach him? With confidence. Confidence. This is my father. He's instructed me to ask. He, and so I don't approach him backing up. I approach him from a... Um, a, a, a position of confidence because I know that it is his will to answer my prayer. And he says that if we ask anything according to his will, what? He hears us. So there is a condition there. You just don't go asking anything. There's a condition according to his will. Well, what is his will? The will is his word. His will is found in his word. And so that's why it's important that we know the word, and that's why it's important that we pray the word. But according to his will, he hears us. Let's read this again. Read it with me. Why don't you read it with me? This is the confidence we have in approaching God, if we ask anything, now look at that, anything, <laughs> glory to God, according to his will, he hears us. Verse 15, and if we know that he hears us, if we know that he hears us, now I used to put, I used to insert and sense, but I can't insert that for you because you may not, have that confidence, that's if. If you really believe this, and if you really know that he hears you, well, since you know that he hears you, whatever 
we ask. We know that we have what we have asked of him. Glory to God. Amen. See, if we know that he hears us, and if you want to go and say, I know he hears me, so I don't have to put the if. I know, and since I know that he hears me, or since we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked of him. Now, you can read that in a religious, traditional manner, meaning I've heard that before, and you can hear that scripture many, many times and get to the point where you, I've heard that, but do you know it, and are you operating in it? Do you believe it? Do you really believe it? Do you get excited when you hear it again and again and again? Because that's a promise to us that he wants to answer our prayers. Not only does he want to, but he does. There are conditions, and we meet those conditions. When we hear him and we pray according to his word, he hears us and he produces. He always, always does. He always produces, but there is a condition because we have to ask according to his will. So what do you believe about prayer? <laughs> well, what do you know about prayer? I know, you, we know we all know some things about prayer. All of us do. Whether they are uh, good or bad, we know some things about prayer. We say, what could be bad about prayer? Well, praying what you've heard somebody else pray, that's not scriptural. That's not good. But we all know some things about prayer. What do you believe about prayer? What should be my posture in prayer? Uh, do, I need, do I need to pray loud? Do I need to pray long? Should I stand or close my eyes? Should I kneel or should I lie down? What, what, what do you think and what do you know about prayer? Well, none of those that I just mentioned are prerequisites or have anything to do with prayers being answered. None of those, whether you sit, whether you kneel, whether you're lying prostrate on the floor. Now, uh, it's all right for you to do those things, but they're not required. And sometimes people put prayer in a box. And if you're not, if you don't know the scriptures, and if you're not hearing from God, that you will allow them to put you in that box. Amen. You got to do it this way. You got to do it that way. You have to say this. You have no, I need to model my prayer life after Jesus and what Jesus said and what the word of God says. So, so be careful what you express if it's not coming from the word of God. Be careful for what you're modeling your life or your prayer life after and whom you're modeling it after. You know, all of us have heard people pray, and we admire the way they pray. There's nothing wrong with that. But we need to understand what the purpose and the essence of prayer really is according to Scripture and according to God's heart. You see, because there's been a lot of stuff going on that God had nothing to do with, especially when we're in our flesh. Amen? This is, but this is a, a, a command. This, in, in other words, if you'll notice, in a lot of scriptures, he will say when you pray. He doesn't say if you pray. There's never an if. It's like there is, God doesn't, is assuming, it's just knowing that you're going to pray because you've been commanded. You know, we talked about that. God commands us to pray. The apostles and the prophets urged us to pray. Jesus himself had a prayer life and, and said in Luke 18 and 1 that we ought to pray so that we won't faint, so that we won't cave in, so that we won't give up. So we know that from the word that we're to pray. So he doesn't ask you. He says when you pray. Amen? When you pray. So how much you pray, how long you pray, how often you pray, uh, that's not the prerequisite for answered prayers. So we need to, let's see what Jesus said about the, uh, about the, those that, the hypocrites. Let's just see what Jesus said. Uh, praise God. In Mark, let's look at Mark 4, 39 of the New Living Translation. 
Uh, let me say, let me say, I'm, I'm going to back up here, back up here. I wanted to just bring, this is a scripture I wanted to bring before I bring another scripture. Um, the reason why I was mentioning uh, uh, these things are not necessarily required. How long you pray, you know, the, you got, in other words, you don't feel like you've gotten a breakthrough unless you've prayed a long, long time. No, 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 leave. Uh -uh. <laughs> no, you don't feel like you've prayed or gotten through unless you've prayed a long time. Well, look, look at this in Mark 4.39. Now, I'm not telling you not to pray a long time. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that sometimes we put ourselves in a box and we have demands of ourselves and we think it's pleasing to God. And that we're we're getting uh, we're gaining something with God, if we pray a certain way in a long time and say certain things and it's you know well let's see what Jesus did, and this is when he uh, he was on the boat with his disciples trying to rest, and these boys that had been with him a long time. Well, I won't call them boys, but these men, they had been with him, and they became afraid. And they woke him up, and, you know, Jesus, don't you, you do, do you not see what's happening? And what did, what did Jesus do? He woke up, he rebuked the wind. This is in Mark 4, 39. When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, silence, be still. That was his prayer. Look how short that was. That was a prayer of authority. He, he, he commanded the, the waves and the winds to be still, to, to just stop the havoc that they were causing. That, was, that wasn't a long prayer. He didn't say, Father, there you are in heaven. You are in heaven and you're my father and you see what the waves are doing. And Lord, the disciples are afraid. And I'm a little bit too, but I know what you've said to me. To, you've instruct, he didn't go through all of that. He just woke up, took care of it, and that was it. So what I'm saying is we need to refocus our attention on what the Bible is saying about prayer, how to pray, and for, uh, for our prayers to be effective. Amen? Praise God. So do you get all your prayers answered? Well, let's, let's look at the scriptures. From the scriptures, we see <laughs> that our Father desires to answer our prayers, and He does. He desires to answer our prayers. And we just need to meet those conditions from the Word that tells us how to pray, that tells us what to pray. Amen? On our part, we need to know and understand how to pray effectively and be sure that our lives line up with the word of God. And what are you talking about, uh, line up? Well, you remember we taught uh, last, the first Sunday, we taught on a heart to pray. Amen? The condition of our heart when we pray. There's a scripture that says, if you, I think it's Psalm 66, 18, I believe it is, if you regard iniquity in your heart, I will not hear you. He will not regard, re, hear you if you regard unforgiveness in your heart. So we need to know and understand that for our prayers to be effective and to be answered, our lives, our hearts have to line up with the Word of God. So we want to turn our prayers into communion with God. Amen? Learn, uh, learn and learn more effective ways to pray. In other words, there's, uh, in Psalms one in Psalms 5, 1 through 2, it talks about meditation. Not all prayers even need to be spoken. See, he's, he, he's, he's tuned in to us when we're thinking. And we'll go a little deeper into this in another lesson. But there are, there's more than one way to pray. There are more than one prayer to pray. There are many, there are different kinds of prayers. We talked about the prayer of intercession. We talked about the prayer of thanksgiving and a little bit about the prayer of petition on the other Sunday. But we want to be in tune with him. Amen. And then we want 
our prayer, we want to be real and authentic when talking to God. Again, you don't have to change your voice and, change, and speak in Elizabethan English for him to hear you. Oh God, thou that sittest high while I'm down low. Oh yeah? Talk to him like you like you're talking to me. He likes for us to be real. In other words, aren't you a friend of God? Just talk to him. Amen. We want him to be real and authentic. He knows and he he looks at and he knows our heart. You know, we talked about that. Man looks on the outward appearance and God looks on the heart. And he and we want to get our prayers answered. Amen. We want our prayers answered. We want in other words, we want results. When we pray, and so when we pray, we want to make sure that it's God's, God-centered prayers and not selfish prayers and or not prayers that's trying to mimic somebody else. Listen, we've got to make sure that we are lining our prayer lives up with the Word of God. So he wants to answer our prayers, and we want to get our prayers answered. Amen. So let's take a look at this, because Jesus talks about wrong praying and praying with the wrong motives. Jesus talks about that. So if he talks about it, it's in the scripture, then there must be some things that could hinder our prayers. In Matthew 6 and 5, the New Living Translation, it reads, When you pray... Don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth. That is all the reward they will ever get. Jesus speaking. Sixth verse. But when you pray, there it is, when you pray. Go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private. Then your father, who sees everything, will reward you. Seventh verse. Now he's saying again, when you pray, don't babble on and on as a people of other religions do. Don't be religious. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. In other words, how good they sound and how good they look. You know what he says in the 8th verse? Don't be like them. Don't be like the hypocrites. Then don't be a hypocrite. For your father knows exactly what you need even before you ask. Some people, especially the religious leaders, wanted to be seen as holy and uh, a, a, public, uh, a public prayer was one of their ways to get attention. In other words, they see me, they see how holy I am, they see how righteous I am, and that was what they were doing. Jesus saw through their self-righteous acts and taught that the essence of prayer is not public style, but private communion with God. Now, that, that, that did not mean that we don't pray in public. He was talking about the way they were praying in public. There is a place for public prayer, but not to get the attention of people. The Gospels record Jesus at prayer both privately and publicly. In Matthew 14, 18 to 19, he was praying publicly. You remember when the, the he uh, had them to get the to take get the little boys a fish, and he fed the 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 five thousand with the two fish and the five loaves of bread. When he got ready, he t he held it up to the Father. He prayed in publicly and blessed it. That was a pub. That was Jesus praying in public. And shortly after, in the twenty third verse, a little further on, he went and quietly prayed. And prayed in in in, in um, prayed privately when he had just finished praying publicly. So the point really isn't it wasn't a choice between public prayer and private prayer, but between heart the heartfelt and hypocritical prayer. That's what he was talking about. Why they were praying? 
the way they were praying. You see what I'm saying? And so in other words, when you're asked to pray in public, you are to focus on addressing God and not how you look or how you're coming across toward others. And I think all of us need to repent of that or either take note that that is not what it's all about. If your mind is centered on how well you're coming across, you're missing, the, you're missing it. I'm missing it. If I'm wondering... Uh, do they like the way I pray? Uh, how do I look? How does my hair look? Oh, by the way, <laughs> how does my hair look? Uh, am I am I am I doing? Am I, is it getting over? And you see everybody crying and everybody, and then you think, oh boy, I'm, I'm really no, 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 stop it, stop it, wrong motive. God, he's not no. He's not even involved in that. We want our prayers answered, honey. When we're praying, if we're praying public, let's close our eyes. If you know, now me for instance, I'd like to close my eyes. I'm one track minded, and I get I can get totally off looking at looking around and looking at this track. It's okay to open your eyes, and you and you know what? Again. Mat matters not whether you open your eyes or close your eyes. But what I'm saying is, it's the heart. It's your motives when you pray. What you're thinking about. Wh who, who are your prayers being directed at? It has nothing to do with how good you look, how you're looking, how good you sound, and you're impressing others with your prayers. If that's the case then we are missing the mark when it comes to prayers and to praying. Focusing on God. Focusing on God. So he said, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray, but they don't connect with God. See, in other words, prayer is no good if you're not connected to God or if you're praying with the wrong motives. Do you know that some people have the audacity to pray and they're in unforgiveness? You could just hang it up. That is, that you have become sadly deceived. If you feel like you can pray and you're in unforgiveness or you're in strife with somebody in your home or somebody in the ministry, at, at your church, in the congregation, on your job, wherever, whatever, we need to know that it doesn't work like that. Our Father doesn't work like that. In other words, He doesn't come down on our level. We have to do things according to the word. And I know that's your heart to do. But I'm just saying there are some circles where people can pray and they can sing. Remember, you're praying. I mean, your character must be louder than you're praying, you're preaching, and you're singing. Your character. So we can't be uh, deceived and thinking that we can just utter anything before God and he hears us and our heart and motives are not right and we have not gone to the altar I, mean, I don't necessarily mean physical altar but taking whatever it is and said Lord I this is not right and I I need to repent of this before I come before you I don't want to go before him and grieve him, and I know you don't either. And so that's what he's talking about was the, um, the way that they were handling prayer. He called them hypocrites. Well, I'm not going to lie. I don't want him to see me as a hypocrite and to call me one, and I know you don't either. So let's line our, prayer, our prayers and line our hearts up with the word of God. Now you already have a new heart. You know, I didn't I didn't go into the scripture to put it out, but you know, um, the scripture that David prayed when he said, I think it's Psalm 51, I believe it's Psalm 51. But, you know, when David prayed, um, create in me, O God, a clean heart and renew within me the right spirit. Well, you know what? That was a good Old Testament, Old Covenant prayer that David prayed. And David was not born again. But you and I have 
better promises. And we're under grace and truth. And Jesus has made it possible for us to get our prayers answered. And uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, look, we're new creatures. We, we, uh, we have a new heart. When you, when you got born again, you became a new creature, a new creation, a new creature in Christ. So you have, your heart is, your heart is already right. You don't have to ask him to give you a new heart. You got a new heart when you got born again. Now, I know, and it sounds good, and uh, when, when and, it, and you know, if you have missed it, just repent. First, that's First John 1 and 9. You just repent. But it doesn't change your spirit. Spirit, man, your spirit is always see. It's it's been it's been reborn. In other in other words, let me see if I can put it like this: the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. God saw to it through Jesus a redemptive plan. That means our heart. Is now our spirit man is now new. So your heart doesn't need you don't need a new heart. You already have a new heart. It's the mind, the will, and the emotions, the soulish realm that has to still is in the process of being saved always. But the spirit, so we don't have to say, create in me a clean heart. You guard the heart that you have. Amen. So that's why. We need to watch what we're praying. David was not born again when he prayed that. We're born again, so we don't have to pray that. But but it does instruct us to guard what we put in our hearts. Amen? So anyway, I, I, I'm, I, I'm just wanting to make that plain that we're not, there. there's wrong ways to pray. pray. I'm not saying that if you pray it, it's going to, you know, it's going to be doubt and unbelief, but I'm just saying that we need to read the word of God and we need to understand what has been given to us. And the death, burial, and resurrection, resurrection of Jesus Christ afforded us all of those things. Glory to God. We're redeemed from the curse of the law. We're redeemed from from poverty sickness and spiritual death we're redeemed and so that's how we pray as those who are redeemed amen glory to god glory to god praise god so prayer is no good if you're not connected with god or praying with the wrong motives prayer glory to god is designed to move us into communion with god that's what we want Communion with God. And communion requires interaction with God. Amen? Monologue is you doing all of the talking. How many of us do that? You know, have you pray, even if you're praying, in, we're just praying. We're just going. We're just going 90 to nothing. And every once in a while, we'll stop and listen. It's difficult to, to listen while you talk. So, unless he's talking to you. And you're trying to, uh, you, you, and you're quieting down. So monologue is you doing all of the talking, but we want dialogue. Amen. Glory to God. In other words, when you spend time listening, uh, when do you spend time listening? So I'm, I'm, in, I'm in it to ask you, do you spend time listening? We, I think we can all work on that. And sometimes uh, he's speaking to us. We're walking, uh, we're driving. Or we and he's speaking to us. Maybe you've been in prayer, and maybe and I'm not saying that you don't ever do that, but most of us like to talk, and we like to pray, and we like to say. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong, but we're supposed to pray. We're supposed to communicate. But again, communication is dialogue. Amen. And so God needs dialogue with us. He talks. We listen. We talk. He listens. Amen. Glory to God. And we need to relax and, 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 and not be uptight about prayer. We should not be uptight about anything that pertains to our life with him. Glory to God. He loves us. He understands us. Sometimes we're praying. We just need to ask a question. And you go in sackcloth and ashes. 
time to go in sackcloth and it's time to fast. Oh, listen, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. He, if there, in fact, this is the life of a believer. Three, three important things. Giving, praying, and fasting. If, if they're in the Bible, when you pray, when you fast. In other words, you're going to be doing this, so when you do it, this is how you do it. And then give automatically that it's there so we need to strengthen those areas but don't get uptight about your life as a believer he wants us to enjoy he gave us these things to enjoy he gave us the word to enjoy he gave us our families to enjoy he gave us the material things that we have to enjoy now success doesn't come from how much money you have success doesn't come from your crib your cash and your clothes, those are byproducts of putting him first. But it doesn't matter how much you have or don't have. That has nothing to do with your success. True success comes from him. Where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. Amen? So let's relax. Enjoy the journey. Partner with the Holy Spirit. Ask him when you don't know something, sometimes just like uh, um, Jesus, when he just rebuked the wind, well, sometimes you just need to use your authority in prayer and speak the word over a situation. And really, there are things that we don't need to ask for because in Peter, he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So we thank him for those things that he has already done. Amen. That's our position in prayer. Glory to God. James 5, 16, Amplified. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Prayer must be the foundation of every Christian endeavor. Don't you approach any new anything without praying about it pray about everything don't take a new job don't leave your church because you got offended god's not going to send you somewhere offended don't you leave your job because you don't like your boss no the, you're a believer we're going to go through some things and praise God, our faith, even during the pandemic, has been tested. Not by God, but we've been tested. You're going to be tested in some areas. And your prayer life, your communing, and your communion with God is vital. Because it's during the times that you're going through trying times and testing times that you are being made you're being you'll see what you can handle when you're going through the fire you see what you can't handle and the and the enemy has played havoc with the minds of some believers because they didn't cast down the imagination and during the the pandemic he locked some people in Got them so in bondage because they were listening to the wrong lies, the lies of the enemy. You can't do that, believers. You can't do that. You have to stay with it. Prayer protects you. Prayer is a covering for you. Communing with your Father, praying in the Holy Spirit. It's important and it's vital. We have to have prayer in our lives. Amen. It takes someone to pray and God moves as we pray in faith and believing. He answers prayers and he wants us to pray. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by faith and not by sight. Glory to God. Amen. Yes, we see a lot. But let's see through the eyes of faith and walk by faith regardless to what's going on around us. You know, if I had quit during some of the 
episodes in my life, in our lives, in our family, even growing up. If I had quit, I don't know what would have happened. It wouldn't have been good. I don't even know how to quit. Do you? But the enemy wants us to. He wants us to give up on God. Don't you give up on God. He's not going to give up on you. 1 Peter 3 and 12. For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, those who are upright and in right standing with God. And his ears are attentive, open to their prayers. He's listening and he's watching as you pray. He loves you so much. Glory to God. And according to Philippians 2.13, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Glory to God. You know what? I want to, this is a confession, and I won't have you to, to uh, repeat it after me because it's kind of long, and I'm going to move through it pretty fast. But let, let me do this con prayer confession. This is a prayer this is a, a, de a declaration to pray and just to, just to build your faith regarding prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I offer up thanksgiving that you have called me to be a fellow workman, a joint promoter, and a laborer together with and for you. I commit myself to pray and not to turn coward, faint, lose heart, or give up. Fearlessly and confidently and boldly, I draw near the throne of grace that I may receive mercy and find grace to help in good times when I need it and when others need it. Appropriate help coming when both I and others need it. This is the confidence I have in you that if I ask anything according to your will, you hear me. And if I know that you hear me, whatever I ask, I know that I have the petitions that I desired of you. When I do not know what prayer to offer and how to offer it worthily as I ought, I thank you, Father, that the Holy Spirit comes to my aid and bears me up in my weaknesses, my inability to produce results. He, the Holy Spirit, goes in to meet my supplication. He pleads on my behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what is the mind of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit intercedes and pleads in behalf, on behalf of the saints and according to and in harmony with God's will. Therefore, I am assured and know that God being a partner in my labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan for the good of those because I love God and am called according to his purpose and his design. I do not fret or have anxiety or fear about anything, but in everything, in every circumstances, and in everything, by prayer and petition, definite requests, with thanksgiving, continue to make my wants and the wants of others known to God. It's intercession. Whenever I ask or whatever I ask for in prayer, I believe that it is granted to me and I will receive it. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man or person makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Father, I live in you. I abide vitally united to you, and your words remain in me and continue to live in my heart. Therefore, therefore, I ask whatever I will, and it shall be done for me when I produce or I bear much fruit in prayer. Glory to God. And you know what? He hears you. And you know what? I received a miracle. I read this. This is from my prayer book. I read that without glasses. Several years ago, a few years ago, I had cataracts removed. I have worn glasses 
all of my life since a little girl and I couldn't see much past my hand, couldn't watch TV, couldn't drive, couldn't do anything, couldn't read hardly big print without my glasses. God is still in the business of working miracles. And he has a miracle for you. He has miracles for us. And, and they're as he will. But you know what? If he's not working miracles, you have your faith. You can use your faith. And he always works miracles. But again, they're as he wills. But I did receive a miracle. And I was blind to almost. But now I see. Glory to God. And he hears our prayers. Amen. And so, Father, I thank you for these precious people that have heard your word. I thank you, Lord, that your word fell on good ground, prepared soil. And, Father, I thank you that no one is in condemnation about their prayer life, the way they pray or don't pray. But they look to you, Jesus. And they look to the Holy Spirit. You're the author, Jesus, and the finisher of their faith. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are active in their lives. And thank you, Jesus, that you ever live to make intercession for us. Prayer is around us. Prayer is in us. And we know how to pray according to your word. Glory to God. And we talk to you and you talk to us. And we just, we just enjoy our fellowship, our intimacy, those times of intimacy, the closeness with you. We ask you to teach us how to pray effectively. We ask you to help us in our prayer life, oh God. And the things that we have misunderstood or have not known, we ask for revelation knowledge. Reveal yourself even more and more to us. We ask in your name. Amen. Praise God. You're going to get an opportunity to be prayed for. I'm going to bring Elder Carey on in a minute. But right now, before I do, we have a gift for you. For all of the members of COC, we have, this is from the, us and the prayer, prayer ministry. Pray, don't panic. Pray, don't panic bracelet. And we all wear our bracelets every service. So when you get one, if you haven't, a COC family, if you have not gotten your bracelet, you can come by the office and get it. Or you can get it during the in-person service. That's Pray, don't panic. And that's a gift that we have for you. Also, uh, our Facebook Fire members, you can get uh, your bracelet through the mail, but you have to contact us. And this is a gift. We're just putting up reminders, the prayer ministry and I, and we're just putting up reminders that we want to pray effectively. We want to pray uh, without ceasing. Glory to God. And these are anointed. And it's going to give you a greater desire to pray. Pray, don't panic when something comes. Amen. So glory to God. I pray that you have received the word. I know you have received the word today. And it won't be stolen from you. And you will be a doer of God's word. I bring to you now Elder Carrie Brown. God bless you. Well, God bless you. God bless you. I know you enjoyed the message today. What a powerful message by Pastor Rose. She touched on points on prayer and just the power of prayer and really how we just pleasing God from my heart. So you out there and you want to please God. Your number one way to please God, first of all, is accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's number one. The Bible says over in Romans 10, 13, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And so that that discrimination, that's no discrimination for the father, no discrimination. So black, Jew, white, boy, girl, uh, salvation is for all. All you have to do is accept Jesus into your heart and believe that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. So that's Romans 10 and 9. The Bible says we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. So we would like to offer you salvation at this time. That is the greatest completion of prayer is receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So you out there with me, you'd like to repeat that prayer after me. Say, Father God, forgive me. I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I ask you to forgive me, to cleanse me. I accept your finished work of the cross. I accept you by faith. In Jesus' name, I'm saved. Simple as that. The message of salvation. And so you out there as well, you're a believer. 
uh, you save, but you've made you made some mistakes this week. Uh, you had some slip ups, some mistakes. God is faithful and just. His mercy is new every morning. So according to 1 John 1 and 9, the Bible said, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to cleanse us and forgive us of all unrighteousness. And so repeat that after me. Say, Lord God, forgive me. I've made mistakes this week. I ask Jesus to cleanse me by your blood. Boom. Is it. You're cleansed. You're forgiven. God's grace, his mercy is there. You're out there also as well. You want to experience with the Holy Spirit. You say, I want to experience the power of the Holy Spirit upon my life. Well, in the book of Acts, the disciples, they had to tarry for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We, in this new, we don't have to tarry because of Jesus, because of the finished work of the cross. All we have to do as sons and daughters is accept what Jesus has already done by faith. So the Holy Spirit is a gift. Uh, he's an empowerment. He's an advocate. He's a standby. So you're out there. So just repeat after me. Say, Father God, I'm a believer. I want to accept the power of the Holy Spirit upon my life with the evidence of speaking out of the tongues. According to the book of Acts, I receive now the precious power of the Holy Spirit upon my life in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you accepted any of those invitations, salvation, rededication, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit working in your life, we ask you to contact contact us at Christian Outreach Center. You can go to www.christianoutreachcenter.com Dot org and you can reach us there. You can reach Christian Outreach Center live via Facebook. Of course, we're on Facebook right now, but you can go to Facebook and you can reach out. Uh, we'll, we'll message you. You can reach out to us in Messenger and Facebook as well. And so we just want to offer, uh, just want to offer our services to you. Our love, our prayer. Uh, we just want to connect with you. That's the main thing. We want to make a connection and thank God for virtual. We can make a connection via virtual. And so we praise God for you. Praise God for you. Those that accepted Christ today, those that rededicated today, and those that accepted the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. We just praise God for you. And for our saints that are out there, uh, before we leave, we want to give you opportunity to give, to be a blessing to the ministry. So the Bible says over here in 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6, but it says this, He that sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He that sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Every man according as he has purpose in his heart, let him give not grudgingly or necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And so we want to give you an opportunity to give today. We have many avenues in which you're able to give today. Of course, we have Cash App. We can give today via Cash App. We can also give today via text. You can text 73256, put in the word winner, and then you can text your giving. That's the new technology. You can also Go to the website. Go to www.christianirecenter.org. You can give there. Just hit the give button, and it'll actually give you all three prompts. It'll give you text to give. It'll give you cash out to give. And also, you can give. Uh, just go to our website and give. Also, if you want to mail in your tithes and offering, you can also mail them in as well. So you can do that as well. We just want to give you every opportunity to be blessed, to be a to be a, a sower, to be a seed sower. So we want to give you those opportunities. Uh, let me pray for you as you give today. Father, we just thank you for the people that gave today, that sold their time, their talents, Father God, their finances. Father, we praise and we thank you for them. And Lord, we thank you that they will be blessed in their giving. We thank you, Father God, they will be giving back to them, pressed down, shaken together with man given to their bosom. Father, we praise you. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to give today. And Father, we just bless you. We bless you. I bless all you out there. Uh, and internet land and Facebook land. We praise God for you joining us in our services. Christian Outreach Center members, we ask you to please uh, reach your e-bulletins. That's how you keep up with us. We also ask you to continue to follow us on Facebook. Uh, that's how you kind of can keep up with us as well. Our pastors come along, minister the word of God. So continue to join us on Sunday mornings at 10. Com continue to join us on Wednesday nights at 7. Uh, COC members continue to join us uh, for the Bible studies and for the different prayer times. Again, if you reach your e-bulletin, uh, everything is kind of up to date there. I'm looking at my e-bulletin right now, so you can look at your e-bulletin via your phone, via, uh, via your uh, iPads, uh, and then that way you can kind of keep up with what's going on. So we love for you to follow us. We love for you to keep up with what's going on. Um, let's, let's close this out in prayer as we watch today. Lord, we just praise and thank you for our service today. Lord, we cover our pastors today. Lord, we cover the members that are out there watching live. And Father, we cover those that are uh, physical service. Father, we bless you. We thank you 
that the people are sold their time and energy today to hear the word of God. And Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to request information about our ministry, or if you have a prayer request, please log on to www.christianoutreachcenter.org. Select Connect and enter your information. Luke 6 and 38 encourages us to give. If you would like to sow into our ministry, please log on to www.christianoutreachcenter.org and select Give. In order to give by text, type the word WINNER to 73256. If you have a Cash App account, you can enter dollar sign COC Outreach. And if you have a Zelle account with your banking institution, you can use our email address Christian Outreach Center 913 at gmail.com. Our vision continues, expands, and abounds to the glory of God. Thank you for tuning in. We know you were blessed by the word that went forth.